Verse number 15, the Bible says, Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as an heathen man and a publican. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now, this is important to understand what this is because there's a lot of people who don't understand how to, how to just understand the Bible and apply the Bible appropriately. There are many different things that can happen where judgment might fall upon a believer. But they don't all fall into this particular category of, well, you have to do all of these steps, and if you don't, you're not being consistent with the Bible, and you're not obeying God's Word. If it's found out that somebody is a drunkard, for example, and I already mentioned 1 Corinthians chapter 5, if Brother Brian or Brother Evan has found out that they're just a drunkard, you know what, both of these guys... They've been saved long enough. They've been coming to church long enough. They know, they better know <laughs> at this point, right, that it's wicked to be a drunk, to be a drunkard. I'm not saying if someone saw them, you know, have a beer, which again is wicked. They shouldn't be doing that. But if it's found out that they're a drunk, that they're going out every weekend and getting drunk and partying it up and that that's just, you know, they, there's these, these drunks. We're not going to, oh, I'm going to approach him one-on-one -on -one, and then if they don't listen, we're going to get more people involved and then, and then we're going to bring it forward. No, if that's found out and it's true, they're just gone. We're putting the wicked people away from among us. We're not doing a vote. We're not doing anything else to rectify those types of situations. We don't need to. Those that are, that are causing divisions that the Bible says we're supposed to mark and avoid, the people that are sowing discord, you're out. This is a different situation. This is talking about, and if we look at the, at the very first part of the, the passage in verse 15, he says, if thy brother shall trespass against thee. So what do we have here? We have somebody doing wrong to someone else by sinning against them. This is a personal matter. If there's people in a church and you have a brother in Christ that sins against you, someone does you wrong. This is how you deal with it. He says the first thing that you do is you try to deal with that person alone. There's no reason. And, and again, and people need to, this is serious. There's no reason to start going around and talking to other people about what this person did to you. Okay, that is not going to help the situation at all, and it's not the right way of doing it. Can you believe, brother, can you believe he did that to me? Look, if someone does you wrong, be a man and approach that person and confront them about whatever it is that you think they did wrong to you and just try to work it out. Amen. Try to deal with it and, and, and do it in a way where no one else even has to know about it. Because that's the way that the Bible's telling us to deal with these things. And he says, hey, and that's why he says, go and tell his fault between thee and him alone. Alone. Right. Just talk about it alone. No one else, you don't need to get witnesses. No one else has to be there. First, you try to deal with thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, Sophie's like, oh man, you're right. I didn't realize that. Or, or yeah, you know, I was having a bad, whatever. If he hears thee, thou hast gained thy brother. Amen. Everything's good. Okay. But if he will not hear thee, he says, then take with thee one or two more. So he's saying, okay, now we're going to get some, some other people who are going to be good people in the church. Good people are going to listen. You know, 
And it says that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. Why? Because normally if someone does something wrong, excuse me, to someone else, there's usually going to be some conflict of, I didn't say that, I didn't do that, and, you know, and there's this kind of, he said, she said, and this back and forth type of arguing of, of just not even agreeing on the facts. And when you have two or three witnesses there, they can help establish every word. Okay, this person said this and this and this, you know, kind of help get to the bottom of the situation and, and really just help mediate, right? Help, help figure out what are the facts, what actually happened here, and still just, just try to make things smooth over, find a solution that everyone's agreeable to, and just, and just be done with it. Because we want to be able to exist in unity as brothers and sisters in Christ. That's the goal. That's what we want to be able to do. But sometimes, you know, people will wrong you. And it's not a sin or wrong to ask that person to make it right. I mean, if someone damages your property or something like that, there's nothing wrong with wanting that person to compensate you for what they did. If they, I mean... If, if I back up my car and I, and I just, I accidentally hit the gas instead of the brake and I smash into someone else's car, you know, why should that person just have to bear the brunt and all the financial responsibility of my mistake? I should be able to own up to it and say, okay, well, um, you know, what, whatever, the, whatever the agreement can be to try to make it right is what that person should do.